down. Edge Beyond. This is Evan Nagao's signature yo-yo. He uh, used this to win the World Yo-Yo Contest in Shanghai last year. Yo-Yo Factory released this as uh, kind of their first foray into the high-end yo-yo market. So I've had the Edge Beyond for about two weeks and it is so much fun. It's so forgiving. It's, it's just a blast. And if you see, I just, I love that fade. Hold it in this hand. Do this number over here. There we go. Can you see the yo-yo? I can't see because of the glare. The black and silver fade. I uh, actually got this yo-yo in a trade and I really appreciate it. I, uh, I lucked out I think. This is a great yo-yo. The diameter is a little on the smallish side while it's uh, also fairly wide. That kind of reminds me of the turning point counter jet. Although as you can see the counter jet could almost fit inside the edge beyond. It's just a hair bigger in diameter it is a little bit wider like like about a millimeter or two wider than the counter jet also but still it has that small diameter um, wide profile look of that also reminds me a bit of the one drop Countach this is the uh, 5000 QV and you see they both have the flat rims on top and the uh, angled V gap in there, uh, catch zone going into the gap. And uh, there, the Countach is larger in diameter. And the Edge Beyond is about the same width as the Countach, uh, just judging by these unscientific measurements here. Check out these rims. They are enormous. You'd be hard pressed to find a yo-yo with, with more rim action than the, uh, the Edge Beyond. They even wrap around and go into the cup and this provides a whole lot of stability and power. And this one is a little on the heavy side for a bimetal. Weighs 64.8 grams. Usually bimetals uh, nowadays are in the 63 to 64 gram range sometimes even 62 or even lighter than that so this is a little on the heavier side but not too much that transfers to extra power and extra spin it really helps it out a lot you don't really feel it on the string it doesn't feel like a weight it just feels like a, a powerful yo-yo and this thing plays super stable, as you could probably imagine, just with the size of the rims and the uh, ratio of, of rim to uh, of body, of steel to aluminum there. It, there's a party going on. And I wasn't invited. It's got a slight floatiness to it, and it's so stable that if you get off kilter, get off plane you can kind of power through it and it'll tend to auto correct in the middle of your trick now, I'm not saying that's going to make you a better yo-yo player this is not a substitute for skill it's definitely not a shortcut and that being said I just don't have the skill set to differentiate the edge beyond from any other uh, heavier bimetal mid to heavyweight bimetal and you see there is a, a spiky hub in the in the center there that means for finger spins you need to use the soft finger technique I'm not really a master of the soft finger technique as a matter of fact I just landed my first finger spin yesterday this yo-yo also holds up very well at low RPMs it uh, doesn't get all wobbly on you and it, it doesn't really tilt that much so that means the regens are going to be extra smooth and extra stable whenever you throw them. 
As far as the catch zone goes, the rims are angled in just a little bit. And uh, so if the string catches right here, I'm just going to block the camera. Uh, if the string catches on the rim like that, it'll just slope on down in there. So you have a lot of help getting you into the gap as far as uh, the catch zone goes, which is, is nice. And as you see here, it, it just fills up the hand very nicely. Uh, the rims make for a comfortable catch. They're nice and flat. You get a, a good palm smack on the return, which is very nice and comfortable. Smaller diameter means you can get a really good tight grip on it and just throw the heck out of it. I would say this is more for the collector or player that wants to, uh, that looks for the little extras on the yo-yos. This has a titanium axle and this has an NSK bearing in it. They, you have, they charge a premium for those extra features. They really outdid themselves when they when they did this. I do believe the price is a little inflated. I think uh, this should have been closer to the 120, 130 range instead of 150. But they're also trying to set a precedent. They're trying to say that this is a high-end yo-yo from Yo-Yo Factory. I get that. And I love this finish. It's almost slippery. It's like Teflon. I mean, you can't really tell just from me touching it, but that doesn't make me want to touch it any less. But if you really want to see what the best yo-yo yo-yo factory can make is, then go ahead and check out the Edge Beyond. I don't think you'll be disappointed because it is a top performer. I think it's a fantastic yo-yo. It will not make you a better yo-yo player. It doesn't make tricks more fun or anything, or it doesn't, and it doesn't make tricks easier. It's just really fun to throw. Anyway, it's very expensive. Probably not worth the whole 150 that people would pay for this brand new. Probably not, but that's the price you have to pay to get this, and it does have the NSK bearing, which is one of the best bearings out there. And this has the titanium axle, which is less prone to stripping. And it is also taking as much weight as possible from the center and moving it toward the rims. So I uh, hope that helped you make a decision on whether or not you want to buy it, how you want to get it, things like that. I'm going to go throw it around let you see what I've been working on and whatnot and let you see how this yo-yo handles the tricks I know. If you like the video, go ahead and like and subscribe. If you don't like it, let me know how I can make it better, please. I would appreciate that. And until you see me again, may your tension remain neutral.